24. CPS Geometry From spheres to geometrical points Euclidean geometry starts with the introduction of the notion of the point as its basic entity, and in a way its most fundamental one. The point is considered to be something without dimensions, with no shape, with no features, and without any attributes. Basically the geometrical points of Euclidean geometry are nothing. CPS geometry redefines the notion of the geometrical point. We will do that in two ways, using our common sense first, and then, using a powerful reasoning initiated by Leibniz, the creator of the differential calculus. In most people minds, the points are associated with very, very, very small dots, on a sheet of paper. So, the points are usually imagined as being circular. But note that this has no influence on how the Euclidean geometry is structured. The Euclidean geometry is built on the notion of nothingness. Points are also sometimes defined as the end of line segments, or the intersection of two straight lines. Using some strange logic, one can infer then, that a line is made up from an infinite number of points. The logic goes like this. Let's imagine a line, and then let's intersect this line with any number of other lines, the intersection is always a point. The so-called logical conclusion is then derived. A line is made up from points. But how come, these dimensionless points can form a line, a one-dimension object? The answer one gets sometime is. This is possible, due to the fact that, there are an infinite number of points involved. Don't get fooled by this sick logic. From differential calculus we know that one cannot get something from nothing. Zero plus zero equals zero, even when doing it for an infinite number of times. Do you remember Einstein's definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. Extrapolating we can say. Infinite insanity is doing the same thing an infinite number of times and still expecting a different result. To escape this paradox, let's associate a shape to the points, let's consider them as being spherical. For size, let's consider the spheres as being infinitely small, or in other words, infinitesimal spheres. As we will see, in CPS geometry, size does not matter. Size is something relative. I will have more to say about this later, when we will look to fractals as patterns in CPS. There is an argument, used by Leibniz, when he considers the ratios for a series of similar triangles. Leibniz argues that the triangle formed when point A, point B, and point O overlap, is similar with all the other triangles, even if this triangle is an infinitely small triangle. The conclusion that follows from here is. Even if some quantities are infinitesimal, ratios that involve these quantities have defined values, they have meaning. The ratios keep the same values they have when the quantities are not zeros. From now on, in CPS geometry, we will consider the points as being infinitely small, identical spheres. Euclidean geometry does not assume or consider any arrangement for the points, in plane, or in space. Later, with the introduction of the Cartesian plane, a square lattice distribution, for the points in plane, is indirectly assumed. By considering points as being infinitely small spheres, the CPS arrangement of these points follows naturally, as the best arrangement possible, for filling up the space. The patterns, structures and properties, discovered in close packing of spheres, can be extended to this infinitely small domain, using Leibniz's argument described above. The angles and directions observed, when considering regular spheres, will not change when these spheres become infinitely small. Keep in mind, the measurement of an angle always involves a ratio. Once again, in CPS geometry, the points are infinitely small, identical spheres, arranged in a CPS pattern, filling up the CPS space. 